Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to G Bears Off Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. Today is February 14th, 2021. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. All right, so I've been hunkered down for the last few days. We had a windstorm, and windstorm after windstorm. Saw uh, gusts yesterday. Let's see, they were probably 34, I think was the high I seen. Anyway, the reason I'm looking here in the battery room is uh, you can see the winds are light right now. They're only about six miles an hour. But you see, I got plenty of power in my system here and they're on float. And they're just floating because I got more power than I need. Uh, the turbine's only making a little bit of wattage here. Okay, so this, this is what the turbine is putting out right now. Okay, you see a climb, got a little gust there. All right, now this under here, watt hours, that's amps peak. That's watts peak. Okay, so in the wind gusts from all the wind storms we've had this year so far, 954.7 is the total watts, maximum watts that my uh, PMA put out. And if you're looking at this and thinking, oh my God, that fitting got hot, it's not hot. It did not get hot and burn and slip or anything like that. It's fine. Um, I will be taking that off of there and solder, soldering that wire together. Uh, but I'm going to wait for the weather to get a little bit better. Yeah, that's been like that for ages and ages and ages. So it's, it's not a, a problem at all. And uh, this fan runs 24-7. Always keeps the bridge rectifier cool. I might put my finger on there. It's never got any heat. And uh, on my dump load, I hooked another fan up here, and I hooked that up to the switch for the solenoid. So when the solenoid switches on to dump uh, electricity, the fan comes on and keeps the solenoid cold. And uh, I was in here yesterday. Uh, my friend Andy came out on Thursday, and... Uh, uh, up until he got here, it was calm. Then when he got here, the winds picked up. And then the, the winds blew the whole time he was here. And he, I was teasing him when he, he was saying he's going to leave today when the winds let up. And this morning they were down, up to about uh, 13 or 14 miles per hour. So he decided he's going to get out of here because got to drive that pass in, in the winds is not fun with a big motorhome. Anyway... I teased him and said, hey, yeah, as soon as you leave, the wind will stop. Sure enough, as soon as he was out of sight, the wind stopped. It's only been, uh, well, I think the max I've seen today is about six miles per hour. But uh, it was completely at a standstill. Uh, it was uh, shorts and t-shirt outside. It was very warm. Uh, I had to take off my hoodie because I was sweating doing a little bit of work. So anyway, <laughs> Just wanted to catch you up on that, and everything's doing really well in here, so no big deal. I love my Midnight Classic. It really is the cat's meow, excuse me for um, saying something like that in front of Tomcat. And yes, Tomcat's doing well. I just checked him a little while ago, and he was uh, uh, just resting in his little igloo inside, and... Uh, he had a little scratch on his nose, so it looks like he might have got uh, into a, a tussle with a ground squirrel or something. But it wasn't too bad. He was just laying down resting. I made sure his food and water was fine. So he's all set. Okay, so one of the other things I had to do was uh, the first night Andy was here, I decided to uh, barbecue some chicken. So... I come out here, and of course, after the sun sets, it's dark as heck out here. You can't see anything. So I have my uh, little Harbor Freight um, lights here, the LED lights, and they stick. They got magnets. So I had this on on the table here, and I had the cover open, and uh, I couldn't see because the light was going up. It wasn't going in. So I opened up the cover. And I stuck it inside. Well, you see the big bubble? I forgot it inside. I checked the chicken. Everything was fine. Closed the cover. 
didn't see the light anymore, so I just went inside. Come back out to check the chicken again, open it up, the light is still burning, but it was melted. And this is the second one that happened to. Now see, you can see it still works. But uh, I was sick of losing lights like that. So what did I do? Well, I put a back-to-back -back receptacle on the wall there because I have one on the inside just right by the, um, right below the window. And it's uh, very seldom ever used. So I backed it up with this one and I only put that cover on temporarily because the uh, outdoor cover that I bought, the weather tight cover, was for the new um, rectangular type decor outlets and I have a standard outlet that went in there. So I'll uh, pick another one up when I go past Home Depot next time. So anyway, I didn't have any sweeps for um, half inch conduit. So I took them in and I heated them up with my um, heat gun and I formed my own um, sweeps on there. So I did it in, in an S shape for that whole section of pipe. Then I got a weather tight switch on there. Then I went up and I put two lights up there and those are LEDs. And this is a 120 volt circuit and here's the switch. Hey, look at that, we have light. So now I'll have light out here. But I'm also, the reason I put an outlet down here is because I have an electric rotisserie that goes on this unit and bolts in here. And then I can put rotisserie chicken and uh, things like that in the, on this thing and let it slow cook. But I could have a place to plug it in, so there we go. And then I thought, well, those may not be enough light when the cover's up. The light is behind the cover, so it may not be enough light to see, but I won't know until tonight. So what I did was put the, the outlet down there, and I've got one of those clip-on uh, lights, some uh, aluminum shape, uh, shield on it with the the spring clip where you can clip it onto the shelf right here and I'll have a light on there shining right into the barbecue. Hey, as Fonzie would say, hey, all right. <laughs> so anyway, with the wind gusts yesterday, uh, we were chasing stuff all around the compound and things were blowing away on a regular basis. And I still got to get down there in the gray water pit and get my bucket out of there that blew over. Got another one that got blown over and stuck up against the bush over there. Ah, just one thing after another. Oh my God. And I'll tell you, those winds were howling all night long. Oh my gosh. But uh, got a good sleep because uh, for some reason, uh, beer was uh, involved. <laughs> all right, so anyway. Um, Andy, Andy liked how nice and warm it is in here when we step in and uh, I just stopped in to see if I need to water anything yeah it looks like I'm gonna have to water my radishes and uh, the, those radishes there too now that's all corn up there in those buckets and it's been almost two weeks now and I don't see any sprouts sticking up so I am I brought a pack of uh, the same pack of corn seeds inside and I will um, sprout them the way I normally do inside of a paper towel, a damp paper towel that's inserted in a Ziploc bag. And when you do that, do not Ziploc the bag. You leave the ba end of the bag open so air gets in and out. And um, I'll just, uh, I'll sprout them indoors and then I'll come out and... Uh, plant the seeds into the same buckets and if the other seeds that I put in there come up beside them well heck then I'll have extra corn right all right so anyway everything's doing well um, my uh, tomato plants all have flowers on them and some of them have already set uh, uh, tomatoes so I'm looking forward to that look at this I have peas look at this huh one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and lots of flowers coming out. So I'm going to have peas like crazy. I love it. I love those peas. 
And when I walk past here, I can take a pee. All right. <laughs> Carrots doing well. They were a little droopy yesterday, and I uh, gave them some water, and they sprouted right back up again. This is really lush. I can't wait to start eating those. I ate, I ate a couple of the small ones. They're only about uh, uh, five inches long, about the thickness of a pencil now. And they are delicious. They're sweet. Those are Nantes, N-A-N-T-E-S. Real good. All right, so with the winds we had, I was afraid of damage to the uh, greenhouse again, but it never got up to 38 miles per hour. That's where I got the damage last time. But what I did find was a separation in the door here. And I can't tell if it's because that unit blew that way or if this unit blew that way, but this one looks real plumb. So I'm thinking that that one blew that way. I'm gonna have to check that out and maybe throw a couple of more braces on it. So everything looks good on here. It held up pretty good, except one little spot over here. And I've got to get to this tomorrow morning. You see the panel popped out there and lost one of the spring clips. I've got spares, so I'm going to put another one of these metal clips on there because the little tiny clips that hold that, they didn't hold. They're gone. They're somewhere out here. It might be behind here. might be inside. Who knows? But I'll put another one of these on. I've got it inside there already, and I think I'm going to probably, as soon as I close this video off, I think I'll get up and do that because the winds are supposed to come back tomorrow, and I don't want that panel flying away. Uh, anyway... That's all I have for today, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is G-Bear signing off.